Thank you. So I would like to start by thanking the organizers for giving me the opportunity to review for you uh, recent developments in the field of TT bar deformation. So there is a new theory out there. It got its name uh, from its description as the irrelevant deformation of two-dimensional QFT by the operator TT bar. But it also has an equivalent description as a uh, dressing of the S matrix of the starting theory that I will call the seed theory uh, by a pure phase and the closely related description of coupling the seed starting theory uh, to flat space jackif teitelbaum gravity. Its holographic dual has been proposed to be ADS3 quantum gravity with a finite radial cutoff, and it shares features with two-dimensional little string theory that is holographically dual uh, to an asymptotically linear dilaton background. These different formulations allow us to compute different quantities, and uh, they provide hints at different generalizations. Uh, having a mysterious theory with different descriptions is not an unfamiliar state of affairs in a string theory conference. And to further motivate why we are interested in this topic, let me list some lessons that we learned from the different descriptions. Uh, it's, so describing the TT bar deform theory as an irrelevant deformation of a 2D QFT uh, gives us prospects, teaches us about how to flow up the RG flow. Uh, dressing the, of the S matrix by phases is familiar from integrability, where it's called the CDD factor, but now we can lift this discussion to the non-integrable context. Uh, the description of the C theory coupled to jackif teitelbaum gravity uh, highlights the expected non-locality of the theory, uh, the, the holographic dual in terms of ADS gravity with a finite radial cutoff uh, resolves long-standing puzzles in holographic RG. And uh, finally, it, it provides aspect, uh, provides a, a promise of understanding little string theory uh, in terms of field theory, um, not just from string theory. So here's the outline of the talk. I'll start by different formulations of the TT bar deformation, and then I will discuss generalizations that were informed by this progress, and I'll end with open questions. So in the first part, I'll describe um, these four uh, topics. So we'll start with the QFT approach. Uh, it all started with Zamolotchikov's realization that uh, any two-dimensional quantum field theory contains a remarkable composite operator. Uh, it's, uh, so we take two stress tensors, uh, we point split them, contract their indices with the epsilon symbols, and then take the coincident point limit. This limit is regular up to total derivatives. Uh, what we get is the determinant of the stress tensor. And we call this operator TT bar because in 2D CFT, this would be equal to TT bar. The next step is to deform the theory. Uh, sorry. Let's first put the theory on a cylinder of circumference L. Um, and uh, as a consequence of, the factories of, of this regular coincident point limit, uh, this operator in diagonal matrix elements of energy momentum eigenstates obeys a remarkable factorization formula. So we take the diagonal matrix element, it obeys uh, this factorized form. On the right-hand side, I intentionally omitted the space-time arguments because in energy momentum eigenstates, one-point functions do not depend on space or time. So the next step is to deform the theory uh, by this operator, TT bar. So this way, we get a one-parameter family of theories in theory space. So that's this orange line here. And at every point of this line, uh, we move in the direction of the TT bar operator defined at that point on, in theory space. So we use the stress tensor at this point uh, to build this TT bar operator. One conse consequence of this is that uh, the the TT bar deformed Lagrangian is not simply TT bar added to the C theory Lagrangian with a constant, uh, with a finite coefficient. It's more complicated. This is an irrelevant double trace deformation. 
uh, and naturally questions about UV completeness arise. Uh, but one nice property of the theory is that it preserves almost all the symmetries of the seed theory. In particular, if the starting seed theory was integrable, the deformed theory remains integrable, and this way it enlarges the known space of integrable theories by quite a lot. It also preserves supersymmetry, uh, and it's been understood that uh, it's described as adding the supercurrent square to the superspace Lagrangian. So a consequence of this factorization formula is that we can understand the spectrum of the deformed theory by solving a partial differential equation, turning a QFT problem to a PDE problem. So here's this equation. So we get the change of energy uh, as we move in uh, this uh, space of theories uh, a little bit. So the change of energy with uh, lambda. And on the right-hand side, we get a quadratic expression in energy and momentum uh, because we know the matrix elements of the stress tensor in energy momentum eigenstates. In particular, we get momentum and we get the derivative of the energy with respect to the circumference L. Uh, this PDE is well known in fluid dynamics. If we relabel the coupling to be minus time, the energy eigenvalue uh, to fluid velocity, and L to the spatial coordinate X, we get the Forsberger's equation. You can recognize the fluid derivative, the material derivative here, and on the right-hand side, the forcing term. The analogy with fluid dynamics does not stop here. If the seed theory had higher spin charges, then uh, it obeys, uh, these obey a linear equation. This describes in the fluid language a distribution of probe particles that write this fluid flow. It's called passive scalar equation in the fluid literature. Um, so you, again, can recognize uh, the material derivative on the right-hand side. If we want to solve this equation, we need initial conditions. Uh, we need to know the fluid velocity profile at time equal to zero, or if we have higher spin charges than these passive scalars at time equal to zero. This, in the QFT language, corresponds to knowing the spectrum for all values of L. If we have a CFT seed theory, that's just an appropriate power of L times a constant. And with this initial condition, we can write down a closed form solution. It, con it contains a square root. The higher spin charges are just powers of this. Uh, the square root singularity corresponds to shock formation in fluid language and is problematic to understand from QFT. So here's a sketch of the spectrum at lambda equals to zero. I have a CFT spectrum, and then I can evolve for positive or negative lambda. The dashed dash li line uh, corresponds to a point where the square root goes complex, and I omitted those parts of the spectrum, and we'll return to this figure in the future. Once we have the energy eigenvalues, we can easily get the torus partition function by simply summing over states, but the more insightful derivation was provided by Cardi, uh, who decoupled the TT bar deformation in terms of a hubbard stratonovich field, which can be interpreted as a random metric over the torus. And if we do this step by step, we arrive at the diffusion equation uh, for the torus partition function divided by the area of the torus. If the starting partition function was modular invariant, uh, this equation has nice modular properties and we get a nice modular partition function in a deformed theory. So let me remind you that all energy eigenvalues evolved independently, and uh, it was shown that the torus partition function is a unique modular covariant partition function with this property. Finally, to transition to the S-matrix discussion, uh, uh, let me point out that one example of TT bar deformed theories is the Nambugoto string in static gauge. Uh, we take the perp free massless scalars as a starting point. We do implement the TT bar deformation and we get this classical Lagrangian. So in a parallel development, Dubovsky, Flager, and Gorbenko were studying the scattering on the word sheet of an Ambugoto string. It's an integrable theory and they found this S matrix. It's a pure phase with a phase shift growing linearly with Mandelstam S and correspondingly we get the universal time delay formula proportional to the energy. Uh, these have these share features with gravitational scattering. 
for positive lambda, we get a healthy theory, uh, but because of the essential singularity uh, on the complex S-plane, it likely has no local observables, whereas for lambda smaller than zero, we still have a well-defined S-matrix, uh, but it has time advance, superluminality, uh, and so it looks a bit more problematic. Uh, this, uh, this result has then led to a discovery of a general addressing phase factor for arbitrary, including non-integrable theories. So this is the addressing phase of, an, of uh, so we start from an n-body S matrix in the seed theory, and we obtain the dressed S matrix uh, by multiplying by this phase. Very non-trivially, such a phase exists, and probably it's unique, the, uh, uh, such that it satisfies unitarity, crossing symmetry, and uh, analyticity properties that we require from an S matrix. If the theory is integrable, then we can go from the S matrix back to the spectrum using TBA, and we recover the square root formula that I already showed you. Um, so this shows that, that these deformations are, uh, or these descriptions are the same. Um, one shortcoming of the QFT discussion that I had uh, was that we didn't really have a closed form Lagrangian, we had a differential equation. Uh, so Dubovsky, Gorbanko, and Mirbabai proposed uh, such a closed form uh, Lagrangian in terms of coupling the seed theory to Jacob Teitelbaum gravity, but now, unlike the previous talks, in flat space. And there's a cosmological constant which is proportional to the inverse lambda, lambda being the TT bar coupling. The vacuum of this theory is Minkowski space with a funny dilaton profile. And this motivates uh, to introduce dynamical coordinates as a gradient of the dilaton. And uh, let me denote by Y the deviation uh, of these dynamical coordinates from the vacuum. Uh, these Ys obey uh, the following equation of motion. Its derivatives are related to the stress tensor of the seed theory. And this then leads to an elegant derivation of the dressing phase by dressing the asymptotic creation and annihilation operators by the dynamical coordinate Y. The S matrix can also be understood as the flat space limit of boundary correlators in matter coupled ADS JT gravity. And uh, these dynamical coordinates perhaps can be thought of as analogs of the reparameterization Schwarzian mode of SYK. The torus partition function uh, that I discussed previously has been reproduced from this formulation, but one needs to use some first order formalism and uh, restrict the uh, target, the, the domain of, uh, of the dynamical coordinates to have torus topology. Uh, besides providing conceptual advantages, uh, this description is also uh, a very efficient uh, calculational tool uh, to obtain the conserved currents of the deformed theory. One can also map solutions of the undeformed theory to the deformed theory, and even the Lux pair of TT bar deformed sine Gordon has been obtained in closed form. So let me now discuss the third uh, description uh, in terms of holography. So it has been proposed that the holographic dual of TT bar deformed uh, conformal field theory is ADS gravity with a finite cutoff. So here's a sketch. Uh, the outer cylinder is the asymptotic boundary of ADS. And then we have an inner cylinder that's the cutoff surface. Uh, and finally, I put a black hole in the middle. So maybe one way to motivate this is that we already saw some analogy with the Schwarzian mode, uh, and so it's natural to expect that we will get some ADS-3 gravity with a finite cutoff, but this is not how we arrived th at this with McGaugh and Hermann Ferlinde. Uh, so back to this black hole discussion. The metric of the BTZ black hole is here. Let's focus on the unblackening factor F. Uh, I can compute the quasi-local energy uh, of this cutoff space time, and I get the square root formula. And if we look at this function f and do a replacement minus 4 pi g divided by the cutoff uh, radius squared, uh, then we recover the previous energy spectrum. 
so this is a strong evidence uh, for this proposal. Uh, it has been long known uh, that uh, the ADH Dirichlet problem has superluminality. Uh, one recovers uh, the superluminal propagation of boundary gravitons in terms uh, in the induced metric of this cutoff surface. Uh, so the speeds that we get are the same that we get from the field theory description. Uh, one very nice thing that this holographic description explains is uh, the following feature of the energy spectrum. So at zero lambda, we start from a CFT, it has cardi asymptotic growth. If we go to negative lambda as instructed by the energy spectrum, then, and throw away complex energies, then we get the finite spectrum, which has a maximum energy and maximum entropy. The holographic interpret explanation of this is that we put uh, gravity inside a finite box, so there's only a finite size black hole, maximum size black hole that fits inside this block, box. It has a finite energy and finite entropy. And so this explains this finite spectrum. Uh, the holographic RG has been also matched between field theory and boundary. Um, if we uh, compute how the action changes as we change the cutoff, we see that that corresponds to deforming the field theory Lagrangian by TT bar operator. There's also a term uh, describing the conformal anomaly. And there's a match between, if you use large n factorization between bulk and boundary. Uh, there have been many matches between cor compu perturbative computations of correlation functions, entanglement entropy, and also some non-perturbative matches. If we include scalar fields, then the story gets murkier, and Guika will explain this in her talk. Um, but the pure gravity story provides compelling interpretations of some features of the TT bar theory. And with scalars, you can also keep locality at the expense of introducing uh, new uh, de deforming operators, so other double traces, and also nonlinear terms in the sources for these matter fields. So this concludes uh, the first part. Let me now con discuss some generalizations. So the holographic RG story can be uh, generalized to higher dimensions. Uh, we get a negative lambda uh, again in higher dimensions. So in four dimensions, for example, we get a TT bar-like operator. But then, as, as in the scalar story, we get terms uh, that are uh, nonlinear in the sources. So for example here, GAB is the boundary Einstein tensor. Let me shift gears and ask the question whether the lambda greater than zero theory also has a holographic description or not. Uh, so we go in this figure to positive lambda. And there, even though there are no level crossings, uh, there's a squeezing of the spectrum and one finds Hagedorn growth. Uh, for the density of states. This can easily be understood by taking the high energy limit of that square root formula we had. We are left with uh, this relation, so the deformed energy is the square root of the undeformed energy. Plugging into the Cardi entropy formula, we get linear growth with energy, and this is Hagedorn. Uh, this can also be anticipated on the basis with relation with Nambu Goto. Uh, black holes in linear dilaton backgrounds share this density of states. And so TT bar deformed theory shares some features with 2D little strings, which are duals to these backgrounds. And there are now explicit string constructions uh, pioneered by Givion, Itzaki, and Kutasov, and uh, followed up by many others. Uh, the worksheet theory in NSNS uh, backgrounds uh, is known. So I'll, I'll discuss the the construction for ADS3 cross S3 cross T4, uh, where there's a factor in the worksheet theory, which is an SL2R vesumino witten model. We can deform this by the exactly marginal operator lambda j, j bar. In, in the dual field theory, it corresponds to dimension four irrelevant deformation, but this time this is a single trace operator. We can read off the deformed background from the worksheet theory. It interpolates between an IR ADS and the UV linear dilaton background. There's some non-trivial profile for the dilaton, and uh, there's uh, a big field. 
and this is for positive lambda. For negative lambda, we get a background with a closed time lag curve at finite radial distance. Uh, as will be discussed in a later talk by Eberhardt, uh, the dual CFT is proposed to be a symmetric product, uh, and uh, the deformed spectrum in this background, string spectrum in this background, uh, can be reproduced by a single trace version of TT bar in this symmetric orbifold, so we take TT bar in every copy. Um, so, after the holographic discussion, let me go back uh, in a full circle to the field theory. Uh, there exist many other factori factorizing quadratic composite operators in uh, field theory. Um, uh, if we take the anti-symmetric product of two distinct currents, uh, these obey the same factorization properties as TT bar. TT bar is one, of, uh, is one example of, of this general class of operators. But to derive a spectrum, uh, you may remember that we need it, needed to know the matrix elements of all components of the current, so both the space and time component. And usually, the time component we do not know. Um, in the case of Lorentz breaking JT bar, uh, the, the current, if we start from a CFT, the current remains holomorphic. And this can be used to fix the space component uh, of the, the matrix element of the space component of the current, uh, and thereby solving, one can solve the spectrum. This will be discussed in Guika's talk. Also, there's also a holographic dual. The holographic dual is understood. In work with Le Floch, uh, we, many, we showed that w by turning on background gauge fields, one can actually solve, starting from a CFT, any deformation that is built out of J, J bar, and the stress tensor. And the string dual of the single trace version has also been constructed. It would be, in my opinion, very interesting to obtain a higher spin generalizations of TT bar. So let me remind you that 2D CFTs contain higher spin quantum KDV currents. So we can build, according to this recipe, uh, higher spin generalizations of TT bar. But so far, we've not been able to obtain a differential equation that would describe the spectrum of these. However, in the zero momentum sector of, of this kind of deformation, so a higher spin current times T bar, uh, we recently, uh, with LeFlog, managed to obtain the density of states. And it's uh, very exotic. It's super Hagedorn. Uh, in, finally, in the DSDS correspondence, there's an another variant that, that's important. Uh, besides uh, TT bar, we also deform by an additional cosmological constant term. And because of the recursive definition, uh, this leads to a non-trivial change in the spectrum, not just the shift. Uh, so let me conclude with open questions. So often TT bar is the leading irrelevant operator near an IR fixed point. So it might be interesting to analyze uh, the consequences for uh, phase transitions. Uh, Dubowski et al. have been exploring the relations with the QCD string. Uh, there's an incomplete understanding uh, of how to put this theory on curved space. And we recently, uh, re uh, like last decade, we learned that uh, we can explore theories by putting them on curved space. So this is clearly an important direction. Uh, it would be good to understand the full space of solvable deformations, and solvable generalizations of TT bar, and perhaps finding new UV behaviors. Um, it's an open question how to best define the lambda smaller than zero theory. In particular, it's interesting to ask whether string theory in a finite box with a cutoff ADS space makes non-perturbative sense or not. And the most pressing question is how non-local this theory is and what is the set of well-defined um, observables. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Questions? Comments? In the beginning 2000, it was argued uh, that um, 
um, ADS with a cutoff brain of the Randall syndrome type would be dual to the uh, dual quantum field theory with a cutoff. Now, what you're saying sounds similar, but the recipe is different. Is there any connection between the two? So, I mean, here, because we are doing an irrelevant deformation, that, that irrelevant deformation is unimportant at low energies, but it modifies the theory at high energies. And uh, if, if you look at this energy spectrum again, oh, it was here, uh, if you throw away the part of the spectrum that became uh, complex, then you basically get a very violent truncation of the model. You throw away the UV states. So in that sense, uh, sp spiritually it's related, but there's a, here there's a detailed description of what to do. Uh, you modify the theory at all scales, and the modification is uh, more violent as you go to higher energies. Any other questions? If not, let's uh, thank Mark again.